everybody. Welcome to Takeoff with John Clark, and it is Eagles playoff time. This is presented by NJM Insurance. And I was thinking about how to get some good analysis for this eagles Bucks playoff game. Well, we've got a guy, former Eagles Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, lost to the Eagles this year, but beat Tampa Bay twice this year. Let's welcome in former Philadelphia Eagles Pro Bowler and Super Bowl champ, Malcolm Jenkins. It is so good to see you again. John, good to see you as well. It's been a while. It has been a while. Now, you still come back to Philly, right? Yeah, yeah. I still got my house there. You know, family still up there. So, yep, yeah. I'm still still called Philly home in the off seasons. And you will always be a part of Philadelphia. We're going to talk to you about some of the things you're still doing in Philadelphia. And also, Tom Brady, that drop pass in the Super Bowl, because he brought it up once again this week and what you said to him. But in Philly, I think we're all curious to ask you, uh, you're one of the most prepared athletes I've ever seen. I remember seeing all the notes you take. So what is the secret sauce for the Eagles to beat Tampa Bay and Tom Brady? Because you guys did it twice. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's a, a secret sauce. Uh, he's, if, if there's one thing that Tom Brady's good at is, is winning games in different ways. He's going to do and adjust his game, you know, by any means to win the football game. And I think that's what makes him special is his versatility and being able to win, especially with some injuries. But, you know, the only way, you know, that you are going to beat Tom Brady is if you can hit Tom Brady. If you can hit Tom Brady, then you'll affect them. If you can affect them, then you can beat them. And that's what we did really well, especially in the last game. Uh, you know, our D-line got to him. Uh, we, and they had some injuries as well. Some guys got taken out of the game. And then once that game got one dimensional, it became really, really hard for Tom Brady to execute. Um, but their defense that they have is still opportunistic and even kept them in that game. And so it, the one thing about us is we match up very well against their personnel um, to be able to just, you know, play man to man, split safety and stop the run still. But I think what the Eagles are doing, you know, in their formula and the, the way that they beat us the last really two seasons, being able to run the ball and control the game. I think that's going to be a key to keeping Tom Brady on the sideline, keeping him off the field. Uh, but you're definitely going to have to be able to get some pressure on them if you want to have any kind of uh, effective plan against them. And you're the only current NFL player who is doing some analysis this year on Thursday night football for prime video. So I, I think as soon as you're done football, you're going to have offers from everywhere for this because uh, you're good at it. So give us an idea of what it's like when Tom Brady comes out of the huddle and he's looking at you guys on defense uh, he knows exactly where everybody is, but does he also know what you're doing sometimes? Yeah, I, well, I think you you definitely got to disguise him. If you want to just show him what you're doing, he's going to read the book. He's going to know where to go with the football at all times. Um, but he's also somebody who's very cerebral. You're not going to just fool him. Uh, but you do need to at least make his reads a little bit later with some safety rotation, hiding some of the blitzes, showing different looks and, and, and having multiple coverages out of it. Um, but at the end of the day, at some point, you're going to have to line up and win your matchup. And I think that's what, you know, that's what we did well is be able to, per guy, you know, match up on a tight end, match up on Mike Evans and win those matchups. And when you do and you make him sit and go through one read to the next to the next, you give your defensive line some time uh, to be able to get to him. And so that when we talk about pass defense, that's the ultimate team defensive stat because it's a combination of coverage and rush. If you can't cover early in a down, then the ball comes out quick. It's in the receiver's hands and the D line is completely ineffective. But if all of a sudden you can take those reads away, cover early in a down and give that, that, that rush some time to get there, then it's up to the rush to actually win those one-on-ones. Uh, you want to keep more guys in coverage. You don't want to try to get Tom Brady with a blitz. You got to win with a four man rush and win in early down or early in the down uh, in coverage. And again, that takes the entire defense <laughs> to beat one player. And you guys were the only team in the history of Tom Brady's career to shut him out on his home field. And I saw that game. You did a really good job on Gronk. And that's really what concerns me here in Philly is Gronk against the Eagles. He didn't play in that first game against the Eagles. When Tom Brady gets that ball out, like two seconds, so quick, he's going for that first read. How do you disrupt him getting to that first read and give the line that extra second? Well, the good thing, you know, it, Gronk is not their quick game option. He's he's their vertical guy. He runs routes across the field uh, where he can, you know, get out in space and, and get to running. He's not, you know, your change of direction route runner. Um, and so, you know, you've got to be able to keep him from, from getting those overs across the field. He's a high target once he gets into the red zone. 
you know, they like to split them out as the X receiver and get them one-on-one with a backer. You're going to have, or, or a safety, and you're going to have to win those matchups unless you're going to roll up coverage. But so, so, so Gronk is just really trying to keep him from having those explosive plays. Um, he's not going to beat you with, you know, quick outs and, and slants like that. He, he can convert some third downs in that way. We saw some of that in the game that we played. But really, if you want to contain Gronk, it's about keeping him from the back end of the defense, keeping him from, from winning on those over routes when he's, you know, crossing the face of the safety and getting behind those linebackers off a of play action pass. And that's really what he's made his entire career off of. How important is it to be physical at the line of scrimmage? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a big guy. So if you're going to be physical with him, you got to be able to go toe to toe with him because he, you know, he invites that contact. He likes to create contact, especially at the top of his route um, to, to, you know, get he's not a speed demon, but he can run a little bit if he if he creates separation with his body. So that timing, you know, being able to disrupt him a little bit, at least at the line of scrimmage, even if you use some of the D linemen to chip him and just harass him on his way out, it just gives, again, the rush a little bit more time. Tom Brady doesn't have those those quick answers. And, and then hopefully, you know, you like I said, you you win in those other matchups. Is he the best tight end you've ever faced? He's I mean, he's up, I think, you know, Gronk is yeah, I, don't, I don't know anybody that doesn't think he's going to be a Hall of Fame, you know, tight end. Um, is he the best in the game right now? It's some it's some really exciting young young tight ends out there that are getting younger, faster. Uh, but obviously, when you look at the the his career and what he's been able to amass, he's definitely going to be a Hall of Fame tight end. So the Eagles, obviously, after that first loss to Tampa Bay, they completely changed their offensive philosophy. They said, we have to commit to the run. And when you came to Philadelphia, the Saints were the top run defense in the NFL by far. And uh, the Eagles put up 242 rushing yards. What makes the Eagles so tough to defend right now with the running game of Jalen Hurts? Yeah, I think it starts with the offensive line, um, you know, and their execution, their ability to line up and just maul you and bully you, you know, through the entire game. It, it's a it's an onslaught of physicality, of gap schemes and runs. And then obviously the quarterback run aspect of their run you know, game, it adds another element, another guy, the post safety. You can't play single high. He's now have to account for the quarterback. Um, and if anybody misfits, then all of a sudden those those gaps get a lot bigger. And when you have the dynamic runners that the Eagles have in space, it's really hard to, to bottle that in. And then, it, you know, it still can throw the ball. You got guys out on the outside that can win in one-on-one coverage. And, and when you when you want to dedicate too many guys to the run, all of a sudden Dallas Goddard and, and all those other guys are, are really tough to deal with, you know, one-on-one for an entire game. So it's just about that balance, being able to continue to keep Tampa Bay on their toes, you know, mixing in the quarterback runs, adding play action in there when you can, uh, but really controlling the clock, controlling the game, getting the third and manageable so that you're not putting yourself in situations where it's third and long and you're potentially, um, you know, one one side or playing left-handed and then all of a sudden you cre- they, their defense creates turnovers and takeaways. The last thing you want to do is give Tom Brady extra possessions. You're right about that. Now, you have faced both these teams. You faced the Bucs and Tom Brady a lot now, especially being back in New Orleans. You think the Eagles have a shot in this one? I, I'm, I'm like, I don't know if you've watched. <laughs> this season seems like anybody's, you know, got a shot to, to beat anybody. I don't, they're, you know, I feel like every team has gotten upset at some point in time. Every team's gotten embarrassed at some point in time. Uh, and I don't think this playoff season is going to be any different. I think it's really, um, you know, comes down to who's the best on that day. And I don't think the Eagles have to be the best team or be better than the Tampa Bay. They just have to be better that day. Um, and, you know, it's, it's who, you can't call it, I think. I think they definitely have a good shot to, to compete and give themselves the opportunity. Uh, so we'll see what happens. So you faced Jalen Hurts last year at the link. And then this is his first full season, obviously. A lot of people say, hey, he's a rookie quarterback for real in a new offense in the NFL. Have you seen improvement from last year to what you saw at the link about, I don't know, a month ago, month and a half ago. Yeah. Well, both, both. Yeah. The first game, his first start was against us. uh, And then we saw him again this year and the result was pretty much the same both times. Uh, He played great. They they ran the ball down our throat. Uh, We had to throw out that game plan a couple of times, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think to me, the consist, everybody wanted to see consistency. um, And I think you've seen that, you know, he's, he's definitely put the Eagles in a position to win. Um, you know, he's executed the, the, the game plan when the, when the philosophy changed to really fit 
the the players uh, on the field. You saw the the you know the turnaround and the success and the execution all of a sudden follow suit. So, you know, I'm, I know I've been impressed with just how he's handled it as a young quarterback. He's one of those young quarterbacks that are out there that, you know, can win in any game that they that they line up in. Um, and so I, I definitely think they have the, the he has the, the chance to beat, you know, Tom Brady if, if they put together that collective, you know, team performance. Some insurance companies use jingles and mascots, but not NJM. When you're up front with your customers, you don't need gimmicks. NJM, no jingles or mascots, just great insurance. Get a quote today at NJM.com. You know, a couple Eagles this week actually brought up your name. Uh, Jason Kelsey was talking about what he's telling the younger players, and he said you and Chris Long and some other guys when he was first coming along and getting into the playoffs, uh, you spoke about the moment and how it can take over you, but you can't let that happen. Um, Jalen Hurts, do you think he is built for this moment from some of those experiences he had in college? Yeah, again, I'm looking at his first start at in the NFL, you know, all the butterflies, all those things versus the vaunted Saints defense. And I didn't see a drop of the moment being too big for him then. So I don't expect, you know, and, and he's played in big games in college. You know, he's been on that stage, uh, I think. And, and with the leaders like Kelsey in that locker room that have been there before that can understand how to keep this team tempered the right way, keep them locked and loaded and not, you know, intimidated by the, the stage, I think he'll be fine. I, I think you spoke to him uh, after this year's game or last year's. Well, what did you last tell year. him? About, okay, what'd you tell him? Yeah, I told him last year, you know, I, I can see the situation around him, you know, wasn't necessarily ideal. Um, but Philly loves fighters and they love people who persevere. And so what I told him was, look, it's a tough city, but you just keep grinding and you'll be fine. I can see that he's, you know, a, a guy who doesn't mind a challenge, who, who, you know, is a leader, steps up, takes the bullets, owns everything. And I think, you know, those are the type of qualities that the Philly fan base uh, really admires. And so it was only a, you know, a matter of time before he began to win some hearts, uh, so I just told him, you know, stick it through. <laughs> Try not to read the paper uh, any on you know, Monday and Tuesday. You'd be fine. Nobody reads the paper anymore. It's 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 Twitter. It's Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever medium you want. Just don't read it on Monday <laughs> and Tuesday. You'd be fine. <laughs> hey, uh, how about the Eagles' running game? Because a lot of people say, hey, you got Vita Vea in the middle, and he is one large human being. So a lot of people are saying, hey, you might want to get it out on the perimeter. And the Bucks have been kind of burnt by that recently. Do the Eagles have basically the offensive line because of their athleticism and size and also Jess Stoutland with the variety of runs? Do they have the ability to pretty much beat you in any way in the running game? Well, I think they, they definitely have enough versatility to to attack, you know, any weak spot that you have in your front. So, you know, they'll try in the middle just to be able to control the game if they can beat you up and dominate you. Uh, if you're stout in the middle, all of a sudden they start getting gap scheme runs. You've got pullers coming on the outside. They'll make your perimeter players, your corners, your safeties, see if they can set the edge versus some of these linemen, uh, especially now that you can't cut them this year. So that becomes a little bit, you know, difficult. And, and then they still have enough variety off the play action pass to keep you honest. So I, I do think, um, you know, at least out of the last two years, of the, you know, the defenses we or offensive we played as a Saints, the Philly run game has really been the, the only one that we felt like we couldn't get a handle on. And that's and that's been two years in a row. And so, um, you know, I've definitely been impressed by, by what they've been able to do. And obviously that that run game has literally turned changed their uh, entire season. And so they're definitely going to have to hang their hat on it this week. You have had some good battles with Tom Brady. Of course, you got him in the Super Bowl, even though he passed for over 500 yards. Uh, you had that 99 yard pick six in New England. Uh, do you guys talk after the game at all? How spirited are the battles with you guys? Yeah, we talk. I, I don't know how personal he takes it. I know for me, he's probably my he's, he's been my favorite opponent, you know, in my career. Um, and obviously, you know, it, it, we had a couple games when I was in Philly, you know, Super Bowl bigger than than any of them. But then now he's in the NFC South and I see him twice, <laughs> twice a year. Uh, and, he, and, and then he's got a roster that's lined with Hall of Fame players. Uh, and we've still been able to have success. And that's been, you know, not an easy task to do, but definitely fun. Um, and and in, especially this year where I feel like he's having an MVP caliber season uh, to be able to, you know, compete at him when compete against him when he's playing really, I think some of the best football he's played uh, is, is 
the highlight kind of of the season. And, and uh, he's playing at the age of 44. Are you going to make it to 44? Is that only no, for the quarterbacks? I can, I can promise you I'm not going to make it to 44. <laughs> That's only for the quarterbacks because you can't hit them now. Yeah, exactly. I, I hit too many people to, to make it that long, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been blessed. I, I, don't, I don't need to get to 44. So obviously that drop pass in the Super Bowl, uh, Tom Brady brought it up once again this past week on his podcast. He said he, every time he runs into an Eagles fan anywhere, they bring it up. He brought it up after a Sunday night football game unprompted. He's brought it up before. How much do you think that is still in his mind, that drop pass, but the Super Bowl loss? I, I, clearly, it still is. Uh, and, and I'm like, I don't know if my, my trash talk had helped sear that into his brain or not, but uh, <laughs> that was definitely a funny, funny moment to me. It's, it's, it's not often that you can get into Tom Brady's head, uh, but that play, whether, whether it was just him feeling like he could have impacted the game uh, or just us trolling him for years now, uh, it's still there. So definitely a lot of pride. Eagles fans can keep taking pride in that moment. <laughs> What'd you say to him right after he dropped it? Cause you were right next to him. Oh yeah. I just said, come on, Tom, you got to catch that. You know, he, I know he expected, I know it was a big moment and, and we were all holding our breath because he was wide open. Uh, it was a well-timed trick play. And when he dropped it, I'm like, okay, let me see if I can get in his head. I'm just smack him on his butt real hard and say, Hey, come on, Tom, got to catch that. He didn't flinch, though. They obviously went on to throw for almost 500 yards or whatever it was. So I, I doubt I had any effect on, on his psyche that day. But uh, Do you ever bring it up with him uh, over these past couple of years? No, I got I to gotta play him twice a year. I'm not trying to make, <laughs> you know, the, the GOAT. Uh, it, he doesn't need any more motivation to play us, trust me. Well, it is fascinating because even another clip, he said, it's not the Falcons that I despise or make me cringe. It's the Eagles. And then you see on the match with the golf, the celebrity golf, Peyton Manning kind of busted his chops about Nick Foles and the Eagles. Does that bring a sense of joy with him being the GOAT, the greatest ever, that you guys were able to get that one? I mean, it's the it's the cherry on top of that season. I, I Like, the, the entire story of how we even got to the Super Bowl, I think, was, you know, a great story. Just so many different, you know, things that we had to overcome, the injuries, blah, 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 underdogs. And then we get there and have to beat, the greatest of all time in order to get Philly's first Super Bowl. Um, and so, you know, while it, it wasn't everything, it definitely, I think, added some context and some texture to the significance of that win and, and how far we had to go uh, to get it. You know, it's interesting, Malcolm, because uh, Carson Wentz that year, 12 and two or 13 and two, uh, got the home field advantage with all of you. Um, and then Nick Foles won the Super Bowl. It obviously didn't work out in Philly. And then obviously the last game this year in Indianapolis. Are you surprised about the trajectory of Carson's career that it's that it's gone down like this and that and he had a game like that in Jacksonville? Yeah, I think, you know, when his first two years, there was, you know, a, a lot of excitement around what he was doing. His first year, he's, he's really exciting player to watch. He's very off schedule. Uh, making big plays, he's moving around the pocket, scrambling a little bit. Um, and then that that second year in 2017, just having an MVP season. Like I think if he didn't get hurt, was probably a front runner for the MVP. Um, and you know, and then obviously we just haven't seen that same production since. I think we've seen flashes of it. We you know he's gotten injured a few times. He's been banged up. Um, and then you know the turnovers are are really probably the biggest issue of his career. Um, but if he can cut that down, I think he's, you know, his talent in the, in the NFL is undeniable. He can be a starting quarterback in his league. He can lead a franchise, um, I think, all the way. It's just the ability to reduce his turnovers and the consistency, um, you know, that we all kind of want to see with him knowing firsthand, especially being in a locker room where you saw what he was doing those first two years. It was so special and so mind blowing that, you know, I think that that is kind of the, the bar that we continue to hold his career up to and I think you know it's probably a little bit unfair for him but um you know he just hadn't returned to that form just yet so uh that Super Bowl year Kobe Bryant came and spoke to you guys and I remember interviewing you and some other Eagles the younger Eagles were especially were just like their jaw was dropping uh and and Nick Sirianni the head coach of the Eagles brought that up this week along with some of the things that you imparted to Jason Kelsey and everything um what was that message from Kobe Bryant to you guys that year? I think he said something along the lines of every single detail or, or is amplified in the playoffs, every fundamental. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's similar to, you know, he really just spoke to us more about his mindset 
going into games, his mindset as a leader on the team and how he would challenge his teammates and, and, um, and that the fundamentals are kind of the, the difference makers. Everybody wants to, to do, you know, something special. And this was really my message to younger players when we were in that playoff run was everybody wants to imagine the playoffs to be this dreamy thing. You, you know, your whole life, I've worked to get here. You want to make the one handed interception. You want to, you know, I don't know, do a backflip into the end zone, something crazy that's memorable. But, but, but wins playoff games are the same things you learn in Pop Warner. It goes back to who can tackle the most consistent, who can block, who can get open and execute over and over and over. It's the simple things. Who can do those better than anybody? Um, and you really have to, to eliminate all the other distractions. And, and, and it's the same task that you have in a, on the practice field, except nobody's there. The only difference is now that the lights are brighter. There's more fans in there. There's a little bit more pressure. There's more at stake. But the task is still the same. And whoever can can settle down and execute at the highest level with the simplest things usually ends up winning these games. I'll tell you, Malcolm, I'm, I'm looking over this list of all the things that your foundation is doing for Philadelphia and our area still, even though you're in New Orleans. And uh, I think it's really special. You had the holiday dinner basket surprise and, and fed over 500 families. And Rodney McLeod, who continues to still talk about what he learned from you leadership wise, volunteered to go out there and help feed those families. What did that mean to you? That's, I mean, it's, it's big. I obviously, you know, the work I do in the communities that I love is really important to me. Um, and not being able kind of to be in, in every city at the same time uh, is rough. And so we, we lean a lot on our partners. We lean a lot on, you know, our sponsors, but, you know, for Rodney to kind of, hold the flag for us and, and be our ambassador to really, you know, show love and distribute those, those um, meals to families. Cause, cause we were spread out around uh, four different cities. Um, so for him to do that for me, was, you know, was just love. We appreciated him so much. He's doing great work now. I've seen him kind of take a lot of the things that we've talked about in the locker room and really apply it to his own platform. I'm watching closely with the work that he's doing in Philadelphia right now in the, in the team as well. Uh, with with uh, trying to stop gun violence, all of that stuff is amazing. So to have Rodney, you know, really step up for the foundation and more importantly for the community, um, you know, is more so uh, 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 a tip. We 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 kind of give him a round of applause for his commitment to just good work, no matter if it's his work or or my work or anybody else. He supports good work for his community. Uh, he should be he should be applauded for that. Did he get in touch about uh, getting any tips about uh, beating Tom Brady and the Bucks? No, no, I haven't gotten a call yet. I'll, I'll probably expect one sometime soon. Uh, uh -huh. But you know, if not, I'm I'm watching. Obviously, uh, I think I, I selfishly, I'm I'm definitely rooting for the Eagles. Um, but you know, it's it's going to be a good game. When you when you see Eagles games, uh, when you're when you're off, not playing on Sunday, you're, they weren't on prime time much this year, Malcolm. But right. um, do you still root for the Eagles if they're not playing you? Oh, 100 percent. And and we had a lot of common, you know, common um, opponents this year. So I got to see them on tape oftentimes. You know, I, I watch specific defenses kind of over and over again. So I always check in on on the Eagles to see what what is looking like, what guys are going through, uh, what they're doing, um, checking out Jalen Mills up at the Patriots. So yeah, I still keep tabs on on all the guys. Have you seen the Eagles defense from your tape study? Uh, initially this year, it looked like they were kind of playing more safe, you know, two deep safeties. Have you seen them kind of get more comfortable with the personnel and, and maybe get a little bit more aggressive and try some other things? Yeah, I think, you know, it's always, it always comes down to, you always got to figure out what the players on the field are best at. And that's always a moving target when you have injuries, you got COVID, you got, you know, things like that. Um, but but I, I think you've seen the confidence in that defense grow as the season has gone on. Same way with the offense as they kind of gotten into the mode where they it fit their personnel, all of a sudden you execute better, your confidence get better, you play better. And, and I think you saw that, you know, it really collectively with the entire Eagles team, but definitely the defense. All right. And uh, to wrap this up, I'm so impressed by some of these other things your foundation is doing, um, giving over 1000 savings accounts for students in the communities, um, one of the schools, Parkway Northwest High School in Philly, I believe you gave an entire class a savings account, maybe 260 kids. So you're 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 trying to eliminate that racial wealth gap. 
Um, and then also you have a digital, a digital academy with your foundation. Um, and it really helps college bound and non college bound students. And we can actually put up uh, the graphic here. You're going to have an auction. And uh, I think there's some items that Eagles fans would like. Uh, how much of a, a piece of your heart is still in Philly and how much do you, um, how much does it mean to you to still help out in these communities and see change here? Yeah, I love to to plant roots wherever you know I go, and I've been blessed to have fan bases really embrace me all over the country, none more than Philadelphia. Uh, and so, you know, when I leave places or I, I you know have to depart for a while, I want to make sure that my you know impact stays intact. And so our programs don't move. When I started in New Orleans, our programs have been in New Orleans uh, even when I was in Philadelphia and are still going today. Um, and so, you know, the biggest thing that, that we've been focusing on recently is financial literacy, like you said, on um, the building a digital education academy, understanding that everything is going virtual now, um, but also that, that there are more non-traditional paths to success than, than we often talk about. Um, and, and there are more, we see more of them now where you don't necessarily have to go to a four-year college to have a career. Um, and, and we're trying to expose as many kids to that as possible um, and the way that we can do that without having an analog uh, program, we can do that virtually and touch you know, kids, not only in Philadelphia, New Orleans, New Jersey, but everywhere. And so we're fundraising right now to build that out where we can have um, leaders in different uh, fields you know, give testimonials and, and educational tools virtually on how they became successful in these alternative career paths. Um, yeah, and then the auction that we have is live throughout the, to the Super Bowl. It has some cool items. I think it was a signed uh, Eagles jersey in there, custom suit from my shop in Demar that's still in Philadelphia. And then, and my favorite auction item is this mosaic art piece. It's myself um, and Chris Long when he decided to put his arm around me during the national anthem. Beautiful art piece that's on auction in there. That that uh, item, the proceeds will be split between me and Chris's foundation. It's a phenomenal piece of art. Definitely, uh, you know, for any Eagles fans who might be into art or into that moment, uh, definitely go check out the, the auction. It's on um, nflauctions.nfl.com. And we're putting it up on the screen. And uh, Malcolm, not only did you help bring the first Super Bowl to the city of Philadelphia, uh, you've had more of an impact than most other athletes I've ever seen in this town and continually changing lives, improving lives here in Philly. So we thank everything you've done for our city. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and thank you so much for your time. I know it's valuable. We appreciate this. Kind of like the secret sauce of how maybe the Eagles can win this game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Miss everybody in Philly. Hope you guys are well. Happy New Year. Raiders.